I wanted to do another quick example so you can see how this is done in practice. A spring of unknown spring constant sitting on a rough surface is compressed a distance x. So that's the amount of compression right there of this spring over here. A block of mass 0.5 kilograms is placed at the end of the compressed spring. That's right over here. And it's touching the spring and the spring is then released the distance the block moves in total from where it started to its final location after sliding is recorded as d. So this distance right here is d after the block has left the spring, it ends up right over there. The coefficient of kinetic friction between the block and the table is 0.4. The experiment's repeated for several chosen values of x and d is measured. And here are those data that were taken in this experiment. Here's the problem. What quantities would you graph in order to get a straight line of best fit? Then they're going to ha have us fill in these blanks in the data table with any calculations necessary to create a linear graph. Finally, we're going to plot those values and from the graph, determine the spring constant of the spring, which is going to be represented by K. That's what we're trying to figure out, the spring constant. All right, let's take this one step at a time. First of all, what quantities would we have to graph in order to get a straight line of best fit? Well, in order to figure that out, all we need to do is figure out what our theoretical relationship is. So I've got to use some physics on this before I do any graphing. Uh, I've got this spring right over here. It's compressed a distance x right there, and then the block slides a distance d. So what is my basic relationship? Well, whenever I see springs and friction, I'm thinking energy conservation. Uh, so E initial plus work non-conservative equals E final. That is my generalized equation. What kind of energy am I starting with? Well, over here, you can see the spring is compressed. So that would be the spring potential energy. And then there's going to be some work of friction, which is going to be negative. That's the friction that it experiences on this table. And then it's going to be E final, which when this stops is going to be zero. Now I'm just going to get more specific. The spring potential energy is one half kx squared plus the work of friction. Well, that is going to be negative because it's uh, doing negative work. It's slowing the object down. That is going to be the force of kinetic friction times d, which is the distance that the object slides. Now I'm going to even more specific. One half kx squared is the energy stored in the spring plus the force of kinetic friction is going to be mu k times the normal force, which in this case is mg. And then my d is still there, equals zero. So now when I write this equation out, I'm just going to separate the, the terms here. 1 half kx squared equals mu k mg d. So here's my fundamental theoretical equation right there. But I'm trying to figure out what I need to graph in order to get a linear equation. Well, because the x is my independent variable, that's what I'm changing, I'm going to put that or some function of that on the x-axis. I'm trying to figure out uh, what this k value is right there. And my dependent variable, which I'm going to put on the y-axis, is d. I'm just going to rewrite this whole thing such that I've got it in this form, y equals mx plus b is what I want. Or in this case, looks like it's just going to be y equals mx. Now d is the dependent variable, so I want to get d all by itself where y is. So if I do that and put d over here, d is going to equal 1 half kx squared divided by mu k times mg. And I'm going to write this now like so. So now what I've got is I've got it in this y equals mx plus b form. The d is on my y-axis. 
the x squared is actually on my x-axis. It is a bit confusing using this generalized y equals mx form for this because there is an x in my theoretical equation. But nevertheless, on the horizontal axis, I'm going to have x squared. And then what will my slope be? What will be this? So it's clear that what I need to graph is d versus x squared. So the answer to this part is graph d versus x squared. Now, of course, we could graph the square root of d versus x, but as mentioned before, it's going to be easier to calculate squares instead of square roots. So for part b, we now have to fill in the blanks in the data table with any calculations necessary to create a linear graph. So I've summarized the results of the last part here at the top, and what I want to do is plot the necessary values. Now, in order to do that, what is it that I need to calculate? Well, I've already got my D values right here. Those are already set in my table. Uh, what I do need is X squared values, though, so I'm going to have to calculate those. So luckily, X squared is a little bit easier to calculate in my head. I'm just going to go ahead and do that. X squared up here in the data table, and that is in meters squared. 0.1 squared is 0.01. Uh, 0.2 squared is 0 0.04, and 0.5 squared is 0.25. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph D, these values, versus these values, the X squared values. So I've transferred my X squared and D values to this Google Sheets program here, and I've already graphed it. But what I need to do is I need to figure out the line of best fit. Now, when you do this on the AP exam, you have to do it by hand. Use your graphing calculator to verify that, but you have to justify all your work on the exam, so it's best to do it by hand showing your slope calculation. Here on Google Sheets, I can just have the program itself calculate the line of best fit and slope. Just go to Advanced Edit, select at the very bottom, Trend Line, and choose Linear, because this is obviously now a linear relationship, and I'm also going to label it with the equation. And in addition, just to make sure my value is very accurate, I'm going to show R squared, which is kind of a grade for how linear your relationship is. Notice over here, I've got uh, R squared equals 0 0.999. If it were one, that would be a perfect linear relationship. Uh, here's my equation. Notice that Google Sheets will not change your variables to something more meaningful. It's going to force you to use Y and X. So we're going to have to change that in our actual equation when we write it. So when I rewrite the experimental relationship, I need to use the actual quantities being graphed, which in this case gives us D equals 50 is the slope to two sig figs, and that is in meters to the negative one, and then it's times X squared plus this very, very small intercept 0.021 and that is in meters. Uh, and is this neglectable? Well, we may have to wait till later to find out, but just looking at it, compared to these values of D, it is a very, very small fraction. So I'm gonna assume that that is pretty negligible. And then I'm going to write my theoretical relationship right under it, which is D equals K over two mu K mg times x squared. Now you can see how our experimental slope and our theoretical relationship line up as usual. And then we're going to now set these two values equal to each other. Here is the experimental value of the slope. Here's the theoretical value of the slope. Setting those equal, and I'm going to now solve for k, the spring constant, which is what I'm actually trying to do to solve this problem, times g and on AP exams, you can use 10 newtons per kilogram or 10 meters per second squared, whichever you prefer. You can also use 9.8, but it makes it harder to calculate. When I do all this, I get 200 newtons per meter, which is the correct unit for the spring constant because I've got per meter right there. These are unitless. Kilograms cancel right there. What I'm left with is newtons per meter and there is my final value. So that's it for linearization. See you next time.